Hello family, we thank God for today. We bless him for another day he's made for us to be glad and to rejoice in. Today, as we carry on looking at what Jesus looked like, today my focus is going to be on what he looks like or the Bible makes us believe he looks like in his resurrected state. I will make references to a couple of passages of scriptures, but the first scripture I want to make reference to is in Matthew chapter 27, verse 38. It says, two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The second passage of scripture I want to make reference to is in John chapter 20 from verse 24 to verse 29. It says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is an account of what happens when Jesus resurrected from the dead. For we know that he died and the Bible has made it clearly known that on the third day, Jesus all by himself the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who had said that he had power to lay down his life and to take it up again, resurrected from the dead. Nobody went to his tomb to pray for him. Nobody petitioned the Lord to cause him to come back to life all by himself, though he was bound and would have been because that was the tradition. And we know that to be so because when Lazarus died, and Jesus went to the tomb. Jesus said to the people to roll away the stone, the stone rather, at the tomb of Lazarus. And when Lazarus came forth, Jesus asked that they will take off the, the clothes that they had used to wrap him up. But when Jesus resurrected, nobody had to do any of those things. All by himself, he came. And when he came, he demonstrated or showed himself. And so this account is telling us that he had gone and shown himself to some of the disciples. Some of them had seen him. Thomas was in there when Jesus first revealed himself. And so they relayed the story to Thomas, who says that unless that I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails is, I would not believe, indicating that he knew that because Jesus had died and the manner in which he had died, there should be scars left. And so the Bible tells us that Jesus manifests himself after Thomas had said that he needed to see in order to believe. And Jesus said to Thomas that put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put your hand into my sight. And when he had done that, the Bible tells us that Thomas then exclaims and says, my Lord and my God. And on account of that scar which he saw, the Bible says Thomas believed, which says to me that though the Bible has made it clear to us that when, before Jesus died, he would, the form and his appearance was not one that people would automatically be drawn to. After his death and he resurrected, he had a scar. And so to really kind of prove 
that Jesus' appearance includes him having the scars as a result of the nails that were pierced into his hands and his side. I want to quickly share with you another passage of scripture. In Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 1 right through to verse 6, it says, I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back closed and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel announcing with a loud voice, who is worthy, having the authority and virtue, to open the scroll and to break its seals. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth, in Hades, the realm of the dead, was able to open the scroll or look into it. And I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. Then one of the 24 elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look closely. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome and conquered. He can open the scroll and break its seven seals. And there between the throne were the four living creatures. And among the elders, I saw a lamb spelled with a capital L into brackets in the amplified. It says Christ standing, bearing scars and wounds as though it had been slain with seven horns, complete power, and with seven eyes, complete knowledge, which are the seven spirits of God who have been sent on duty into all the earth. Here is an account of the revelation God gave John. And in this revelation, he sees heaven and he sees Christ standing. And as he saw Christ, one of the things he saw was that he bore scars and he bore wounds. The scar is obviously a reflection or an imagery of that which Thomas had seen. And so even when Jesus ascended into heaven, and we know that in heaven, the Bible tells us that everything in heaven is perfect. Those that have had opportunity to have a revelation of heaven, whether because God translated them or whether it's because they died and they they were, their spirits went into heaven. Everyone who has ever given an account of seeing heaven talks about how it's so pure, how it's beautiful, how the state of heaven, it cannot be compared to anything they've seen on the face of this earth. But the only thing in heaven which will surprise many of us, is that though Jesus is the one who heals the sick, he's the great physician, he's the great healer, he has power, as I've already alluded to, to lay down his life, to take it up again. He has power, and when he walked on the face of this earth, he demonstrated it that even in his name, the blind get healed. By his name and his power, even the dead come back to life. So Jesus really has power to get rid of the scar that he bore even through the crucifixion. But no, in heaven, he still bears that wound. And I actually had someone on YouTube. I've watched many of these um, YouTube videos of people who have died. And one of the things I always do is when somebody talks about seeing a revelation of heaven, and I would encourage you to do that, It's always to check whether some of the things they have said, how many of those things they have said they saw is confirmed in scripture. And one particular person whose testimony I heard of the revelation they saw or seeing Jesus is the fact that the person says that Jesus bore the scar. And so in heaven, in his glorified state, Jesus still bears the scar demonstrating that truly he will forever be the lamb of God that was slain for us. I want to make reference to another passage of scripture that tells us what Jesus looks like in his resurrected state. In Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 10 right through to verse 19, it says this, I was in the spirit, in special communication with the Holy Spirit and empowered to receive and record the revelation from Jesus Christ on the Lord's day. 
and I heard behind me a loud voice with the sound of a trumpet saying, Write on a scroll what you see in this revelation, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and after turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands I saw someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching to his feet, and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, glistening white like snow, and his all-seeing eyes were flashing like a flame of fire piercing into my being. His feet were like burnished white hot bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was powerful like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword of judgment, and his face reflecting his majesty and the Shekinah glory was like the sun shining in all its power at midday. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though they're dead. And he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, absolute deity, the Son of God, and the everlasting one living in and beyond all time and space. I died, but see, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and of Hades, the realm of the dead. So write these things which you have seen in the vision and the things which are now happening and the things which will take place after these things. Now, for some of you, if you've got a you're somebody who likes imagery and learn best by imagery. I'm sure that even the imagery that I've, I've read to you, some of you might find it very hard to believe. How can somebody look like the sun? How can somebody have a sword in his mouth? But great thing about the passage of scripture I've read now is it causes us to know that Jesus can be seen in human form because it tells us, that he had clothes, he had a robe, and he had a sash around, wrapped around his chest, and he had a face reflecting his majesty and glory. And it reminds me of the scripture where Jesus says to us that he is the light of the world. This is this Jesus that we'll be looking at this year, who we know the Bible says walked on the face of this earth, died, was resurrected, is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, makes intercession for us, and he will be coming down again in glory to judge the living and the dead. On this note, I want to say a quick prayer. And Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for what you have done for us, given us even the scriptures to let us know what you look like. Thank you. That, Lord, for those of us who have never had the opportunity to see you reveal yourself to us, thank you that your word says that blessed are we because we have not seen, yet we have believed. And thank you for the people that you revealed yourself to and in revealing yourself to Father God. Many people can attest to the fact that they know that you exist, not because of what I have read in scripture, but because many, many, many more people in our day, in our generation are seeing you in all your brilliance, in all your glory. And so we pray that Jesus, you'll continue to reveal yourself to us, that we will trust you fully. In your name, amen. We're now going to go over our memory verse. In Lamentations 3, 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. We're personalizing it by saying, it is of the Lord's mercies that I am not consumed. His compassion towards me will never fail. The Lord bless you and I look forward to sharing with you in a few days time. Be blessed.